What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about steel bolts in Revit. So with the introduction of the steel tab in Revit, which gives us tools for steel and steel structures, steel uh, connections, and so on, well, one of the tools that we have is the steel bolts. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to create steel bolts in Revit, what are some of the settings that there are, and what are some of the things that you need to know about steel bolts in Revit. Now, if you want to learn more about complex steel structures in Revit, I actually have an entire course where I cover how to make these complex steel structures. I show you how to build like a complex steel warehouse and add all the little steel connections and so on. So if you're interested in learning all of that, I suggest you check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below the video. Uh, there I have many different courses on many different topics in Revit. Uh, overall, there is over 100 hours of content and I'm adding more uh, each month. So if you're interested, make sure to check that out. Uh, also, if you want to check out my Revit project files, uh, that is available on my Patreon page. That's going to be the second link just below the video. Finally, make sure to subscribe and like this video uh, because then, well, it helps tell the YouTube algorithm to promote the video to other people that might want to see that. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's immediately get started by going here to Models, going to New, and I'm just going to be using the default metric template for this project. Uh, let's then hit open and now we're just going to be kind of creating the construction for which we're going to be using our uh, bolts. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is just navigate here to the project browser, go to elevations and then open up the south elevation. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to add an additional level. So I just lower the DL level 2 here and then I'm just going to go to the architecture tab to the datum panel and then go to the level tool. LL is the shortcut. I'm just going to place another level here above at the uh, 6,000 millimeter height, just like that, there we go. And then let's get started with placing some elements. So I wanna go back here to level one, uh, then go to the structure tab, and then let's go to the column. So just the structural column, CL is the shortcut, you just click there and then you can place your column. So uh, here we already have this universal column and I'm quite happy with that, so I'm just going to use that one. Uh, and here instead of depth, make sure to set that to height and instead of unconnected, let's go up to level 3 and let's just place it here in the center, just like so. Uh, now for our beam, we're going to be placing that in level two, just like this. Zoom in a little bit, and if you don't want the kind of the, the di diagram uh, display, uh, make sure to go here to the detail level and set that to fine. See, now we have some thickness to this thing. Okay, now it's time to add a beam. So I want to connect a beam to a column, and that's what we're going to be doing by using some bolts. Uh, so let's go here to the beam tool and for the beam tool we only have this universal beam and I don't like the shape of that so I'm just going to go here to load family uh, and then here in the US metric library uh, I'm just going to scroll down and find my structural framing, open that up, go to steel, open that up and then here uh, just below I think I have this one uh, PFC, this is the one that, you, that I want to use and this is something that I'll uh, attach by using bolts. I think this is going to work. So let's select that, hit open. And then here for the size, uh, let's go with the 300 by 90 by 41 uh, size. Click OK and we have it loaded in. Now I'm just going to come in here to this uh, column. See how you can select the end point of the column here at the bottom. Uh, so I'm just going to click there and then go off to the side by, I don't know, something like 2000 millimeters. Click and there we go. Now we have a problem where we cannot select this beam. That's okay. Uh, in order to select the beam we have to change some view range settings so for that make sure that nothing is selected in the view and then you go here to the properties you scroll down and find see extents and here we have the view range. You just simply go here to edit and you change the bottom to unlimited and you change the view depth to unlimited and when you hit apply now, as you can see, this is no longer grayed out and it's clickable and it's editable. So I can edit this and let's set this to 4,000 millimeters in total, just to make it kind of equal. 
on both sides, just like that, and there we go. Now, we seem to have a problem here. If I zoom in, you'll see that these two are overlapping, and you don't want that. Uh, you can uh, see this even better if I go to the 3D view, just like this, zoom in a little bit, and see how that kind of column is going through the beam, and you don't want that. Uh, so what we want to do is just readjust some of the settings to make sure that these are kind of just touching. Uh, so they're just resting one on each other. They're not, uh, well, they're not in conflict like this. So how do you do that? Uh, well, if I select the beam here, you can see that here we have this little dot and it has a line and that's kind of the center line of the beam. Now it's currently here uh, sitting in the middle of, well, it's not the middle, but it's I don't know, like a quarter way through, and you don't want that. You want it to sit here at the edge and that would move the entire beam towards the outside. Uh, we should be able to see that in level one. See, here that's there's that line. See how it's, the line is touching the edge of the, the column because that's how we've placed it, uh, but the, uh, the beam kind of moved off to the side. Now we can fix this quite easily by selecting the beam itself, uh, going to properties, and then here in the properties, we have the geometric position and for the Y justification, instead of origin, just set that to left. Apply, and as you can see, it has moved. And now if I select that, this dot is here in a corner exactly where I want it. If I go to level 2, that's what we have. Okay, perfect. So we have one of these beams. Let's actually place one additional uh, beam on the other side. So let's go back here to level 2. Select this beam, go to the Modify panel, and then go to the Mirror tool, Draw Access function. DM is the shortcut. Just click here in the midpoint, drag it out horizontally, you click, and it's done. Okay. So we have a couple of these. We go to the 3D view. This is what that looks like. And now let's connect these using some bolts. So the bolts tool or the bolt tool uh, is here on the steel tab. Uh, here it says uh, fabrication elements and here we have the bolt. Now if I expand that we do have some additional uh, items and we can talk about that later on but for now let's place a regular bolt. So just click here on the bolt and then it asks you to click uh, elements to connect. So I want to select this one, hold the control key and then select the beam or the, the column as well, and then hit enter. See how the cursor will change, and now it's asking us to select a plan, uh, planner face to connect elements. So basically a face on which you're going to sketch out your bolt layout. Uh, now for that I can come in here, see how when I come to this point, uh, perhaps if I orbit around, there we go, okay, see how I come here and it kind of highlights that front face, that's what we want to use, so you just click, and it's going to wait for a few moments to figure out what's going on. And there we go. Okay, now we're in sketch mode. So here you create your bolt pattern or your bolt layout. Uh, now you can do that either by using the rectangle tool or the circle tool. Uh, so let's move to the south elevation. We can zoom in here, change the detail level to fine so we can see everything. There we go. And now you can just simply use a rectangle. Let's go like this. There we go, perfect. And then let's just move it towards the inside a little bit. Let's see how much here. If I try to place this dimension, there we go. Let's go 40 here, go to the inside here as well. Again, 40 there, and then off the top. Let's go 40 again, and here as well. If I move this down, there we go. Okay, perfect. So this is going to represent our bold layout. So once I hit finish, it's going to place some holes here. Now here, as you can see, it's going to say none of the created elements are visible in this elevation. Uh, and you might, you might want to check the, uh, the, the visibility settings. So let's escape out of that, go to the 3D view. And again, in the 3D view, nothing happens. Uh, now this is due to the view settings. So one thing that you can check out first is go here to the detail level, set that to fine, and as you can see, now our bolts will appear. So the bolts are there, uh, as you can see, this is what the, they look like. Here we have the kind of the bolt head, and this is the kind of the other side, and the bolts are in place. So they're following the layout that we have created. Now they don't have to be four bolts and they don't have to follow the layout in this way. That's all up to your settings. So once you select the, these four bolts, as you can see, the sketch is no longer editable. You cannot edit that sketch. So once you sketch it out, well, it's done as far as that sketch is concerned. But what you can do 
is coming here to the properties uh, and scroll down and here under the, the structural uh, here we have a bunch of settings for those bolts. So the first one is number on side one and number on side two. What does that mean? Well, here it says two by two and here we have two by two layout. Now, if I change one of these numbers to six, let's see, as you can see, it's going to have six bolts on one side and then just two on the other. If I change this to three by three and then hit apply, as you can see, it's going to have a three by three layout. So that's uh, pretty much what this means. Uh, now, as you can see, it has kind of extended these uh, to the other side of the column. And uh, this can happen sometimes uh, just when you make some changes, it's going to extend here because we have that one in the middle. It kind of wanted to connect the whole thing. So if I just go back one step, see here, because we don't have that bolt in the middle, it didn't go all the way through. So sometimes it's going to kind of freak out a little bit and don't worry, I'm going to show you how to set all of this up later on uh, if you want to connect multiple elements. But for now, let's just leave it like this. Uh, perhaps we can have I don't know, two like this and then four like this. Let's see what that would look like. There we go. That looks much more interesting. And then let's say you want to change the layout a bit further. You don't want the top uh, bolts and the bottom bolts to be so close to the edge of this beam. Well, you can fix that. See here it says uh, intermediate distance and then we have the edge distance. So the edge distance is currently on zero, but let's try changing that. So here, uh, let's just see the sides. So side two is four and the side one is two. So I think that this is going to be the side one and this vertical axis is the side two. So let's go here to distance on edge, edge distance on side one and add something like 30 millimeters. Hit apply. Okay, that was the wrong side, so let's switch that back. Okay, that was that would be side two. See how now the top and the bottom have that little offset so the bolts aren't too close. So you can play around with both the edge distances, the intermediate distances uh, between the bolts and so on. Uh, and obviously the number on, of bolts on each side. Uh, now, let's say that you want the, this bolt to go all the way through. You don't want it to stop here. You want it to go to the other side. Well, you can change that as well uh, by going here to uh, grip length increase. Uh, and before we increase that, it would make sense also to invert these uh, these bolts. So see here, the bolt heads are on the inside and then this is the outside. Let's say we want to flip that. Well, just click here on invert and now it's inverted. Okay, now let's extend them. So I'm just going to select the bolts, go here to the grip uh, length increase and go to, I don't know, something like 300. And now as you can see, it goes all the way to the other side. Perhaps we have to go to 301, eh, perhaps just a little bit more, 302. There we go, that seems all right. So as you can see now, it's connecting both of these beams together. Uh, now the only trouble is I don't think it's uh, poking holes in this beam here. If I select the column, see how when I highlight it has holes uh, both uh, on both sides. If I select this beam, it shows those holes in blue. And if I select this, it doesn't. The reason for that is because initially we did not select this uh, we did not select this uh, beam to be included in this connection. So the bolts will go through, but it will not make any holes. So you can add holes later on just by going here to bolts, expanding the drop menu, and then go to holes. You can then select this face, for example, and now we can place holes. So you can follow the same kind of pattern. If I go here to the south elevation, you can go like this. There we go give it all of those offsets that we've used. That's 40. And then here that's 40. And then here that's 40 and so on. Let's try. Now, sometimes it's not going to allow you to select the edge, which can be really annoying. So we can just go to the center. And then this should be, I don't know, like 120 or 110. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see. Can we set? Okay, now we can set this up. Perfect. 40. There we go. And then this one, if we set that up, 40. Perfect. Okay, so now we can just create the same layout. 
hit finish and now if we go to the 3d view here well it created those holes as you can see on this side now uh, but the holes need just a little bit more settings so here the number of holes should be four on side one oops not the side one it should be the the side two so this should be two and then this should be four see okay that works but obviously these are kind of offset a little bit at the time so what we need to do is give, give that edge distance that we did for the bolts so that was i think 30 on side two so let's see will that fix it and it does and now, as you can see, the holes are exactly where they should be. Obviously, you can change the uh, diameter of the opening or, or the hole if you want. Now, in this case, I think those holes are perfectly adjusted now. See how now when we select this, it has those holes. This one has the holes as well, and everything is working properly. Uh, obviously, you can select the bolts. Uh, you can change the uh, type of the bolt. Or the standard of the bolt you can change the diameter so if you want to be thicker you can do that if you want it to be thinner you can do that and so on so you can play around with that and also you have the whole definition so if i hit here edit and if i just drag this over there we go so here you have the kind of the, the connection elements the type of the hole so is it perhaps a, sl a slotted hole or a i don't know whichever type of a hole that you want to use you can play around with that uh, and i'm just going to leave it at a round hole also here you have the hole tolerance which you can set up we can go to one perhaps and there we go anyways you can set those holes up as well and there we go that's how you place these bolts uh, now just one additional thing uh, if i go here to bolts uh, you also have these uh, shear uh, studs uh, you can place them as well so if you just click you select the surface so let's say that we're going to be pouring some concrete here on top i can select that surface go to the rectangle tool create a really long rectangle like so finish and it's going to look like this at first uh, obviously again number on each side I think if we here set this to one, see, now we have one like that. And then we can go with, I don't know, something like 10 here and, or I don't know, 15. And it's just going to have those shear studs on top. Uh, also here we have some anchor bolts. So if you want to add some anchors, uh, again, you have to select uh, the elements to connect. Now, in this case, I'm not going to select any elements, but uh, if you were to Perhaps if I go here to structure, add an isolated foundation, let's load one in. Okay, now I'm just doing this really quickly to show you. So let's go here to foundations. Okay, let's go with this one. There we go. So if you add like a, a, like a foundation here, and then if you were to go to steel, add a plate on top of that, so set the work plane to level one. Okay, so you would add like a steel plate, which you can kind of weld uh, to this column. Then you could go here to bolts, anchor, and then select this, and then you can just place those anchor bolts. So it's the basically the same approach. As you can see, it just adds these bolts here. You can play around which which type of a bolt you want to use and basically it's the same approach as this a little bit more complicated uh, so anyways uh, if you want to learn more about uh, bolts and all of these steel tools as i've mentioned i have an entire course on steel structures in revit so make sure to check that out uh, i hope you have learned something new i hope i have kind of gotten you a little bit interested in bolts and rabbit obviously it's a very complex topic and well there is much to learn and many settings to play around with uh, but this was more of a kind of an introduction to bolts and rabbit i hope you have enjoyed this video uh, if you're interested in more videos please subscribe like and share this video leave any comments uh, if you have any questions uh, comments or suggestions uh, check out my website check out my patreon page and obviously i'll see you with another video in a few days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.